السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد رسول الله In the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate All praise and thanks be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the whole universe. I bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Peace be upon all of you, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to our program, weeknight program, the message of the Quran. Tonight, inshallah, we'll continue with Surah Al-Isra, which we have started last time uh, from certain verses, and we have stopped on verse 82. Today, inshallah, this evening, I am going to try to cover three verses, 82, 83, and 84, from chapter 17 called Surah Al-Isra, inshallah. And tonight's theme is the Quran is a cure and a mercy. Now, before the discussion, let me put the verses on the screen and recite for you. A'udhu billahi minash shaytanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا وَإِذَا أَنْعَمْنَا عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ أَعْرَضَ وَنَآ بِجَانِبِهِ وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ كَانَ يَأُوسًا قل كل يعمل على شاكلتي فربكم أعلم بمن هو أهدى سبيلا صدق الله العظيم Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the most merciful, the most compassionate. Now, as I have mentioned, dear brothers and sisters, we have started from verse 78. So, and we covered 78, 79, and 80, and 81. Tonight, 82 is, again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is bringing into our attention our holy text, Al-Quran al-Kareem, which is shifa, which means cure, and rahma and mercy for the believers. It means for those who believe the divinity of Al-Quran al-Kareem, which came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the verse said, وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And we send down of the Qur'an that which is a cure and a mercy to the believers. And please pay attention to that part, لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ And when I say this, I remember or I re would like to remind you the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started as alif lam mim thalika al-kitab la rayba fi hudan lil muttaqin it is a guide for whom those who have god consciousness 
for those who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believe in God Almighty, and then also believe in his scriptures. Now here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again is saying that the Quran, this holy text, the scripture came as a mercy, as a shifa, as a healing, as a cure, and then warahm as a mercy. And then the second dimension is وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خسارة. But when it comes to the ظالمين, wrongdoers, oppressors, just it increases the wrongdoers in nothing but their loss. Now in this specific verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that his book, Al-Quran al kareem sent down by him. Him who is the El, you know, the all wise, Al Hakim, and worthy of all praise, we say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. And this book is a cure and a mercy. So, this book, the Quran, takes away whatever is in the hearts in a negative way, or whatever the negative things in the heart, such as hypocrisy, shirk, and confusion. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, La rayba fi. There is no doubt in it. And it is crystal clear book coming from high above. And it also is a mercy through which one attains faith and wisdom and also seeks goodness. And of course, this is again only those who believe in uh, Al Quran al Kareem and then also accept this book as a truthful, as a guide. Now, the Quran, you know, dear brothers and sisters, mentioned similar few verses uh, in order to explain this verse. One of them is from Surah to Fussilat, uh, chapter 41, and then the verse number is 44. He said, قُلْ هُوَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا هُدًا وَشِفَاءً so he said, say to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is for those who believe, it, it means Al-Quran, a guide and a cure, Hudan wa shifa, this time used Huda instead of mercy in the other verse. So and then, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ فِي آذَانِهِمْ وَقْرٌ وَهُوَ عَلَيْهِمْ عَمًا So and as for those who disbelieve, who reject the notion of God, who reject the scriptures, there is heaviness in their ears and it is blindness for them. So that's the dimension of the disbelievers. And the opposite side, of course, the believers, they recite, they memorize, and, and they learn the meaning of the verses and act by it. And then they benefit here in this world and then specifically hereafter. But for those who disbelieve, Allah said, ba'id." So they are those who are called from a place far away. This is just an expression. It means, so they neither listen nor understand. Again, the Quran opens its doors for those who have God consciousness, for those who have, you know, uh, belief in this scripture. And then the second verse that I wanted to share with you is from Surah to Tawbah. Surah to Tawbah is chapter 9, and the verse number is 124. And then the next one, 125. And Allah said here, And whenever there comes down a surah, a chapter, some of them, means hypocrites, say, which of you have you know, his faith increased by this chapter or the verses. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to answer them says, So as for those who believe, it has increased their faith and rejoice. If, I mean, to, to answer uh, the hypocrites, because they have no belief, they have no, you know, uh, do not uh, believe in the wisdom of Al Quran al Kareem. And when you do not have faith, of, you're not going to be 
from and in this Al-Quran al -Kirim. So, and to answer them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believers, then they put the Quranic verses, they increase their faith. And not only that, also they rejoice. Yastabshirun, wahum yastabshirun. But the opposite again, he said, وَمَا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ فَزَادَتْهُمْ رِجْسًا رِجْسِهِمْ So, but as for those in whose hearts is a disease, it will add suspicion and doubt to their The worst part is, وَمَاتُوا وَهُمْ كَافِرُونَ And they die while they are disbelievers. So when the believers hear Al-Quran al kareem they benefit. How do we benefit? You know, we believe that Al-Quran al kareem is, when you recite, it's an act of worship. We recite to ourselves. And we study the verses of Al-Quran al kareem and learn. And then we benefit from the wisdom of Al-Quran al kareem in order to find the bliss here on this world and then hereafter. Now, I would like to spend a little time on how we can benefit from Al-Quran al-Kareem. Dear brothers and sisters, as we all know, Al-Quran al-Kareem is the book came from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through angel Gabriel, Jabrail, Jibreel to the seal of Prophet, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we believe that this is the word of God and it is inimitable text. Now, when we approach this Quran, we have to approach with utmost respect and with utmost attention. When I say this, I remember the saying of the famous uh, poet, uh, Muhammad Iqbal, his father one time told him something really important that totally transformed his life or changed his life. And he mentions this, says one time, my father told me that read the Quran as if it were revealed to you. So not just a you know, book came to, Prophet, of course it came to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but the message is directly speaking to you. So when you approach this book, the holy text, with this mindset, you're, you are totally going to benefit um, holistically. So the Quran, read the Quran as if it were revealed to you, just came for you. Now, again, speaking of holistic approach, when I think about Al-Quran al kareem I don't know if there's any other scripture. Of course, there are so many you know, uh, scriptures, all the scriptures came, Torah um, and, and, you know, Al-Injil, Al-Tawrat wal Injil, and Al-Quran al kareem and Al-Zabur, and some scrolls to the uh, prophets. But I'm just going to specifically focus on Al-Quran al, al, -Qur al, al kareem It has so many beautiful dimensions that we can benefit. First of all, you know, when you recite to yourself, if you know the Hakamu Tajweed, how to recite beautifully, this is one of the most beautiful things to uh, things to do it, and then at the end you enjoy it. I don't know if there's any other text that you know when you recite to yourself that you enjoy deeply, or when you hear from someone who is really good with the recitation, when you hear, and there are so many of them, you you know on uh, online so it affects it touches your heart that's one dimension and the second dimension is you know we are studying and learning from the quran and all because one of the names of the quran is we say uh, uh, that the quran was called al-hikmah uh, the the wisdom so there are so many beautiful things in it that we can benefit in this life we study, we learn, and we apply into our lives. And the Quran 
you know, is not just a book of spirituality, it's not just a book of um, a law, it's not a, just a book of uh, stories of the prophets, it has so many things. And again, it's all about how we approach and how we benefit from this holy text. This is for the believers, but when it comes to disbelievers or the avalimun, uh, those who wrongdoers, and for them, the Quran increases nothing but their loss. Because if you cannot, if you don't benefit Al Quran Al Kareem, and if you go against it, against its teachings, because the Quran is also the books of morality, and then you know, besides being spirituality and the book of ethics, so it totally um, increases the loss of those who goes against the principles of Al Quran Al Kareem. Now, and then the next one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said here, وَإِذَا أَنْعَمْنَا عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ أَعْرَضَ وَنَآ بِجَانِبِهِ وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ كَانَ يَأُوسَى So, and, you know, when we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the, the nature of human being now, and when we say the nature of human being, this is, we call untamed soul or nafs. It says, and when we bestow our grace on man, I mean man or woman, you know, human being, he turns away or she turns away and becomes arrogant. And when evil touches him, he is in great despair. Now, this is again, is the characteristics or the manner or the attribute of raw human being, untamed nefs, untamed, you know, uh, uh, being. But, but when you tame your nafs with the teachings of Al-Quran Al-Kareem, with this, the Sunnah of Prophet that's a totally different story. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the weakness that is inherent in human being, except for those whom he protects at both times of ease and calamity. And if you remember the hadith that we mentioned a few times that, you know, the believer, are the winners in both cases, in times of ease and in times of difficulty. When they receive uh, ni'am, the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they become so grateful. And when they are tested, when they go through uh, challenges, then they become patient. Again, they still increase their shukr, thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah blesses a person with wealth, good health, ease, provision, and help, and he or she gets what he or she wants, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, he or she turns away from the obedience and the worship of Allah and becomes arrogant. Again, this is the corrupt heart or not the heart that which is trained at least, I should say. And there are examples in the life of Prophet Wasallam. There's a, an example, you know, uh, that one of the companions used to come and ask from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to pray for him to become so wealthy that he could, you know, spend his wealth in the cause of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Again, sometimes the blessings could be, you know, curse in disguise. You know, you, you have to, when we ask something from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, we have to always think that the mention that, oh Allah, if this is khair, if this is best for me, and grants this for me. I think that's, that's an important footnote when we ask anything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of just directly asking, you know, as the dua that we use uh, for al-istikhara, you know, especially for marriage that you know, we learn from the sunnah, the, the sunnah of Prophet you know, we say, if this person is good for me, make it happen. But if, if the person is good for this world and then, you know, my deen and dunya, and my religion, my faith, then make it happen. If not, then whoever is best for me, let that person be for me. So I think our approach should be uh, the same for everything else, even for wealth. Wealth is a good thing, not bad, but it's not good for everyone. So that's why, you know, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told that companion, said, you know, just be patient. Go, you know, um, 
do your best. And then he came again and again. And finally, the Prophet ﷺ said, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you wealth and you may be, uh, you know, one of the wealthiest. And they say, you know, this person got so busy with his wealth slowly. And he, they used to call him the bird of uh, the masjid. I mean, he was spending his life at the masjid or the masjid of Nabi at that time in Medina, praying with him and, you know, spending his time with uh, studying uh, Islamic knowledge or praying and worshiping. But slowly this person, you know, faded away from the mosque. And Prophet Sallallahu noticed and, you know, he used to come every time and, you know, be there with the community members. And he started coming only maybe just for Friday prayers. And then at some point, Prophet Sallallahu couldn't see him at Friday prayers either. And when the time came for Zakat and Prophet Sallallahu sent uh, people who collect Zakat. And then he said, you know, I earned this with my hard work so he rejected them and that way prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said this person unfortunately you know became one of those in the quranic terminology losers he lost so again when we ask anything from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i think we should always you know add that portion if this is khair if this is good if this is best for me let it happen oh allah if not, then whatever is best for me. But in this case, my point was here, you know, the human being, those who have uh, not trained their hearts with the teachings of Al-Quran al-Kareem and the path with the Sunnah Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam might fall into this tra trap. And as Surah Yunus said, فَلَمَّا كَشَفْنَا عَنْهُ ضُرَّهُ مَرَّ كَأَلَّمْ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى ضُرٍ مَسَّ So he said, but when we have removed his or her harm from him or her, he or she passes on as if he or she had never invoked us for a harm that touched him or her. This is one of the characteristics of, again, the raw, untamed human being. That's the nature, the manner. That's why Islam came to elevate us. And remember the surah, there are different levels as and then levels so the levels changes uh, change based on our faith and action and here Allah said, You know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed that calamity, that sickness, that problems, you know, whatever they were praying for. And then when everything goes back to normal, they act as if nothing happened and they turn their back to their creator. And that is the biggest calamity, actually, you know, being so arrogant thinking that I don't need God or I don't need anyone else. I'm enough for myself. This is the biggest calamity, biggest disease. So as they say, you know, in, in um, our ancestors, the righteous, I don't know, it's debatable if it's right approach or wrong, but they say they used to ask for small tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it could be health related, it could be, you know, any, you know, daily life or the, the, the part of life test or challenges that way they can remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's, that's actually is, is a fact when you feel weak, when you feel you are in need of help, then you are seeking for a guide or for a help. And in this case, if you have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you keep coming at his door and ask for you know, guidance or for, for help, and which we, you know, recently um, experienced this. And it's almost one year, you know, through COVID-19, you know, we lost a lot of community members and all around the world, so many people lost their lives and people suffered and they are still suffering. And, you know, when you feel you are so weak, 
And the first thing as a believer to do is just turning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asking from him to help and lift this disease. And, you know, and then he said, when man is stricken with evil, which means disasters, accidents, calamities, or sicknesses, he or she is in great despair that he thinks he will never have anything good again. This is another, you know, the extreme opposite. So uh, that we have to find that balance between khawf and raja. So, and, you know, uh, fear and hope. You know, in, in both cases, we have to know how to handle it. And always, again, by asking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and increasing our connection with him through our, you know, good deeds and our prayers. And then the final verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, sabila. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about here again, the manner, the character of uh, human beings. Say, each one does according to shakilat, shakilatun, or shakilatihi means his shakila. What is shakil? Shakilatun is the, the manner, the nature. So, and and your Lord knows best of him whose path is right. Now, when we look at the explanation of this part portion, say each one does according to, you know, his or her shakilatun. Uh, the Ibn Abbas said that the shakila is inclination or the nature. And another Mufassir said that according to his or her intention, or in the translation, as you see the manner. So all these suggestions are, you know, of course, the close meaning, but uh, there is a verse similar to this one. Again, the best way to understand the Quranic verses is through other Quranic verses. And this one is in Surah Tuhud, chapter 11. And the verse number is 121. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, la ala so, and say to those who do not believe, act according to your ability and way. So that means whatever is in you, your action will be the reflection of your heart. So if you, your heart is full of compassion and love and mercy and kindness, your action will be accordingly. So if it's the totally opposite, if you're a cruel person, a mean person, uh, then your action will be according to your heart. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And then, So everyone will be rewarded in accordance with his or her deeds. And for nothing whatsoever is, is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, at the end of the day, the lesson that you know I can take for myself, and if you know wish to hear from me, um, is is dear brothers and sisters. The first part is Al Quranul Kareem, our holy uh, scripture, our holy text, the divine book, came from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to guide us. And as I said, it has so many dimensions. You know, it's a shifa, literally and metaphorically, seriously, like you know. When you, I believe that when you feel sick, read Quran to yourself. Read on your drink and then drink it, then inshallah you will gain cure. And, and then also read and understand and act by it, and inshallah you will be successful in this world. And the most important, again, as I always say, the hereafter. That's why the closest friend for us should be Al Quranul Kareem. That's the only link between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is that? Al-Quran al-Kareem. If you don't know what is in our text, then how can we call ourselves, we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much, and we are Muslims. We need to know what is in our text. And we should, you know, turn into habit, not only reciting, reading Al-Quran al-Kareem in our daily prayers, but also we, have, we should have 
a specific time, which I mentioned in the previous discussion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking about reciting Quran in the Fajr time. So when you get up at Fajr time, after Fajr, you're by yourself, it's quiet, and read Quran, either in a recitation, like in a chanting form, or to understand and pay attention and ponder. So that's the best time. And please, please make it a habit and start slow if it's difficult at the beginning. Say, there will be a no day for me that I don't recite or read Quran. One, two, three, five pages or a juz. It depends on your you know, time or ability to recite or read or understand. But we should have at least some portion of our day, you know, with Quran. So that's really important. And then the second part is, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking about, you know, changing and transforming our heart through the, the teachings of Al-Quran Al-Kareem and the principles of Al-Quran Al-Kareem and the Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So the, the, the last two verses were talking about this. So uh, we are done with uh, the portion that I wanted to discuss uh, from Surah Al-Isra. And Sunday, inshallah, uh, we're going to continue with the portion that I was um, focusing on uh, from Surah Al-Baqarah. And it was about Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. Uh, also, I would like to inform you that this will be the last uh, message of the Quran. Uh, next week, I am leaving, as I mentioned before, to visit my father. Uh, and please keep him in your prayers. Um, and But this um, Thursday, we will have a spiritual fireside chat, and Dr. Assam Abdullah will be our guest, and he will be talking about Isra wal Mi'raj, inshallah. Uh, and Friday, our khatib is going to be Salam al Marayati. And Sunday, Dr. Gasser will be with us, and he will be talking about science and Al Quran al Kareem, speaking of so many dimensions of Quran. So it's another dimension how science and Al Quran goes hand in hand. So please join us Sunday at uh, 12 p.m. Prior to that, we will have Tafsir al Quran. Inshallah, I will be doing the last Tafsir session uh, before I leave. Uh, and it's, it's going to be from Surah Al Baqarah about um, Prophet Ibrahim. So that will be the last program for me before Ramadan. And then keep in your prayers that inshallah I can safely go and then come back. And then we can have another beautiful virtual Ramadan, inshallah. So let me call the event and let us pray Salatul Asha. Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. Shadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Shadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Shadu anna Muhammad Rasul
الله يعلم ما تحمل كل أنثى وما تغيض الأرحام وما تزداد وكل شيء عنده بمقدار عالم الغيب والشهادة الكبير المتعال سواء من أسر القول ومن جهر به ومن هو مستخف بالليل ومن هو مستخف بالليل وسارب بالنهار له معقبات من بين يديه ومن خلفه يحفظونه من أمر الله إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم وإذا أراد الله بقوم سوءا فلا مرد له وما لهم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله العظيم الذي لا إله إلا هو اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام بارك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك سبحان الله والحمد لله ولا إله إلا الله والله أكبر ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم 
له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه يعلم ما بين أيديهم وما خلفهم ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه إلا بما شاء وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤوده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم صدق الله العظيم سبحان الله 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 الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار All praise and thanks be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the whole universe. Oh Allah, give us the goodness of this world and hereafter and protect us from the hellfire. Rabbana firlana wali walidina walil mu'minina yawma yaqum al-hisab. Oh Allah, forgive us, forgive our parents, forgive all the believers. Allah mahabib ilayna al-imana wa zayinhu fi qulubina wa karrih ilayna al-kufra wa al-fusuqa wa al-asyan. وجعلنا من الراشدين و الله make faith dear to us and beautified in our hearts and make disbelief sin and disobedience dislike to us and make us among the rightly guided اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه و الله show us the truth as true and inspire us to follow it and show us the falsehood as falsehood and inspire us to abstain from it. Allahumma shfi mardana, warham mawtana. Oh Allah, please give quick healings for those who are sick. Oh Allah, please have mercy upon the souls of those who passed away. Allahumma fil al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat, wal-muslimina wal-muslimat, al-ahyai minhum wal-amwat. Inna ka sami'un qaribun mujibu al-ta'awat. Oh Allah, please forgive them. Please forgive their shortcomings and mistakes and accept them in the highest level of paradise. وصل اللهم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم آمن الرسول بما أنزل إليه من ربي والمؤمنون كل آمن بالله وملائكته وكتبه ورسله لا نفرق بين أحد من رسله وقالوا سمعنا وأطعنا غفرانك ربنا وإليك المصير لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين صدق الله العظيم سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إكتنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم رب العالمين آمين May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our prayers, our recitations, our supplications, our du'as, dear brothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you whatever is best for you. This is the best du'a I think that I can make for you. Always make this habit and ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is whatever is khair for you. And as I reminded you, uh, this Thursday, Dr. Aslam Abdullah is going to be with us, inshallah. Please join us at the same time. And, and I would like to kindly remind you that whatever we do is here, you know, the recitation of uh, Ayat al-Kursi uh, or the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, these are Sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whenever you pray to yourself, please, after the prayer, before your tasabih, read Ayat al-Kursi. And then also, uh, as I mentioned on Al-Isra wal Mi'raj night, spiritual night, you know, these two verses, end of Surah Al-Baqarah was a gift from Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala through our beloved Prophet to us, his Ummah, um, you know, in on the, the same night, Al Isra wal Mi'raj. So, uh, and Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made this um, a Sunnah, it's, it's his way that before he went to bed or, you know, after Salat al Aisha, basically recited. And these two verses are beautiful to recite, you know, after Salat al Aisha or before you go to bed. And please also have this one into your uh, lists before you go to bed to do list or to recite or to read list insha'Allah. Um, until Thursday, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and protect you. Please take care of yourselves and rest well and have a great night. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you.